story begins. With the title I gave to this or any other tree. Picking ripe fruits from the ground. What I mean by this is this. In life you cannot reach into life and take good from life. Because if you take good from life it's gonna be missed. Therefore it's not the good you want. In order for it to be good, life has to give it to you. Like the apple. If you reach too early into that tree, you ain't the apple. Once you bite on that apple, it's not the apple you want. For that to happen, you have to give time and with time you're gonna find that apple on the floor where it's ripe. On the floor, as in now, is where the Surrealistic Art Project is. It's called Crowdfunding Love, Test, Contemplate, Recognize, Nourish the Truth of Being Human. Love. Love is something very important for the humans. Love is what connects us to us. Love connects us as family. Love is also what connects the human species to this planet. Imagine this. A ball flying through space at high velocity. Love is the universal force holding us to that ball. Because if 2020 years ago when Jesus was born, if love had stopped, women would stop giving flesh, blood and bone for all humans. So love is something extremely important. It's a universal force. It's bigger than us. And those who have love to give only feel the love they have when they give it. And then it says, test, contemplate, recognize, nourish the truth of being human. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. Therefore, I question. My question was, and is, how to identify what is part of an ecosystem without fucking it up? Difficult question. How would we approach this? Well then, we're going to be using a tool to which us humans, we are the best using this tool for sure in our solar system. That tool is our imagination. And in our imagination, what we're going to do a science project. With this magic pencil, we're going to start by taking out an element from this ecosystem. If what we take out, we can reach with today's knowledge, that other things start to fall with it, well that means what we took out is part of the ecosystem, because that's what it is. An ecosystem is something strongly binding connected. Let's test this. Watch. Easy. With this magic pencil, we're going to start by taking out an element from the ecosystem. We're going to take out all the aids of the mosquitoes. We're going to leave the mosquitoes alone, but like magic in our science project, in our imagination, with this magic pencil, we're going to disappear with all the eggs that the mosquitoes put in the entire planet to this second. Watch. Done. Let's think. What happens? The mosquitoes put their eggs in water. If you take out the egg from the water, the small fish has no food. The other fish that it says small fish has no food either. So if we had a graphic in our imagination showing the balance of nature, just by taking out the egg, the graphic would start tilting down because other species would start to follow it. So, you agree with me? The egg is part of the ecosystem because it's connected, it's part of the system. Good. Now, from an element, let's jump straight to predator. Let's find out if predator is also part of this ecosystem. And here, we're not going to do no magic trick. We're going to go back in history. 70, 80, 90 years ago, in America, when they started natural parks, one of them was called Yellowstone. And in this park, it had a lot of wolves that hunted buffaloes. If it wasn't buffaloes, it was whatever. And because the Americans were visiting the park, they stressed that the wolves can hunt the people. So before it happened, they decided to take out their predator from the park. They hunted all the wolves. Question. By hunting all the wolves that hunted the buffaloes, what happened to the buffaloes? The buffaloes disappeared from that park. And that shows another key element of this ecosystem. Like the apple that falls from the tree, everything seeds back into the ecosystem. Including the dead buffalo with seeding conditions for other buffaloes to come. Very simple. The wolf would hunt the buffalo, eat the buffalo, leave the rest of the buffalo. They would attract animals. They would attract smaller animals. They would press the grass, make this grass grow. They would bring in the buffaloes. So by hunting all the wolves, there was no more dead buffalo to feed all those small animals. That grass stopped growing. Plus, taking out the predator, other smaller animals quickly invaded that space. So very quickly created erosion in the natural park. 20, 30 years ago, they put the wolves back in the park. Guess who's back? The buffaloes. So, as we see, the predator is also part of this ecosystem. So you cannot take out the predator in this planet because prey will fall. So prey, predator is part of this planet. Now, last question. What happens if you take out humans? First, the animals we domesticated, what we did was this. We went into nature, we grabbed one of nature's creation, and we brought that into our collective bubble of memory and made our own domesticated version of it. The second we let go of these animals, like an elastic, they go back into their natural shape, not lost. 
even in the Amazon, where people live in balance with nature, the difference will be three pigs inside a fence will be running around free. Nothing falls with us. And if you look at that graphic in our science project, in our imagination, when we take out the predator or the egg, it will tilt down. If we take out humans, the graphic will tilt up because nature will take back everything we'll fuck. So this planet flourishes without humans. Okay, so in a planet where you cannot take out the predator, prey will fall, what does that make it? us humans? I believe we're an invasive alien species. But listen, it's not a matter of reason. Because listen, more certainty than all certainty I have, including this conversation we're having, is this. I have seen people pass away, and the sun keeps coming up. For that to happen, the planet's has to rotate. Which means for every second we're speaking here, we've been traveling 365 meters per second that way. And same way you and I will never be three again, the seconds that went by in this conversation no longer exist. It's now in our collective memory. So welcome to the Surrealistic World Peace Project. Odyssey in Space Within, reporting journey into the unknown. My canvas is the collective bubble.